We're going to talk about the metaverse. The world is on the cusp of going meta with major companies perfecting the technology required. The name is meant to reflect the company's new focus on its new online digital realm known as the metaverse. The idea of the metaverse is not really here yet. Like the metaverse doesn't exist yet. We're building it. We talk about the metaverse all the time, but I have to admit, I don't really understand it. I don't know what it means. But sometimes it's, it's pretty bad. It's pretty harmful. It's pretty addictive. Take a moment just to imagine how this metaverse is going to end the internet as we know it. Entire life and all your interactions are being fed into an algorithm that exploits you. This is a recipe for disaster. Hi everyone. Let's start off today with a very famous quote from one of the greatest movies ever made, Inception. My dreams, they feel real while we're in them, right? It's only when we wake up that we realize something was actually strange. I think this quote impeccably resonates with the feeling and the thought one would experience as soon as they have been in the metaverse. The metaverse today though is far from feeling real, but the one which has been hyped and envisioned in its complete form will surely make it feel real. But at the heart of both dreams, and the metaverse lies the same principle which brings about the strangeness quotient, decentralization, which by the way has its nature embedded in totally unregulated domain. So today we'll be discussing 1. Principles such as decentralization and deregulation which form the backbone of the metaverse. 2. The looming discrete darkness which these principles and concepts might give rise to as the metaverse reaches its maturity. To understand the concept of decentralization, let's first understand centralization with an example of Yahoo at its most glorious point in the internet life cycle. A lot of apps and services the internet uses today were either invented at Yahoo or found their residences there post-acquisitions. For example, before our beloved YouTube was Yahoo TV, which came out of Broadcast.com. Before Evernote, there was Yahoo Notebook. Before Spotify, we had Yahoo Music. Before Instagram, there was Flickr. Yahoo even pioneered the pay-per-click advertising model. That was in a short span of time all over the internet. So when Yahoo was offering this many varied services, the footfall across the dispersed ecosystem was more than a billion a month. Now with such a huge user base, the website and its ecosystem of products became a central attraction for internet users. With data of each user going in and out of the centralization network for Yahoo. But the question is, so what is so bad about the centralized network? Well, for one, these companies serve as the keepers of information on the customer. And these keepers sell this information to other companies. Thus, you receiving phone calls all day long saying personal loan le lo ya fir credit card le lo. Also, another major factor which makes centralization such a big issue is that if the central system fails, it results in denial to all the other websites in that ecosystem, thus manifesting a huge dependency. And the most important of all is that centralization controls the flow of information you gain access to instead of users' own personal choice of content. For example, a survey in US identified that most people in the US follow Facebook and it directs what content they should read and watch, which is basically the sponsored content. So the question is, will decentralization fill all the gaps created by its counterpart? And will it be totally future-proof? Well, no, actually. Decentralization forms the backbone of the metaverse and the shortcomings can thus be introduced, become prevalent quite easily and turn into a dark metaverse. Let's understand how this change cycle could take place with three simple principles. Number one, tragedy of commons. Number two, cash is king. And number three, disinformation for hire. Tragedy of commons is a widely popular theory and states that in an unregulated environment which is not bound by any social foundations and rules, the common resources will be depleted because of the selfish gains and that too without any concern for the common greater good. To further illustrate, owing to fast fashion and surplus production luxury brand Burberry in the year 2018, burned $38 million worth of cloths just to prevent the dilution of their brand 
that could arise by its profuse circulation in the market. This behavior was elicited only out of organizations on interest and openly ignored the bigger causes of environmental degradation and helping the underprivileged. Now that's the tragedy for sure. The question is, how does this pertain to metaverse? Well, as metaverse will evolve slowly and steadily, it will be flooded by the business opportunity seeking firms. The data of people experiencing the services will be stored by that particular metaverse organization, which in turn will again be sold off to other players for targeted advertisements. Only this time it will be worse, since it will lead to a multitude of problems like number one, unfair competitive advantages to the players who are developing customized products according to the data of the users, thus going against the competition. Number two, unrestricted tracking of special psychological reactions such as expressions, vocal changes, respiration patterns, pupil dilation, hurt rate and many more. Number three, environmental impact due to the surplus unavailed targeted products being destroyed as we discussed with the Burberry case. Number four, thought manipulation with agenda driven human like avatars controlled by algorithms. So metaverse certainly requires regulation to some external agency or body so that the issues which will be vividly popping up can be curbed to some extent at least. During the pandemic time, when COVID cases were breezing like dust in air, Formula One took the bold step of not cancelling the race. During the press conference of this race, when Lewis Hamilton was asked as to what brought the authorities to make this decision of going ahead with the race, a simple answer was Cash is king. Cash, Cash is king. And I think it's pretty clear the point he was trying to make. Companies in the presence of opportunistic tendencies tend to falter on the important aspects such as security and safety. For example, Meta set up the semi-virtual world by the name Horizon Worlds, inside which BuzzFeed created their own private world by the name Quinverse as an experiment to test Meta's moderation policy. They intentionally put out phrases that Meta had specifically promised to remove from Facebook and Instagram. Example, COVID is a hoax. BuzzFeed then reported their own actions to the Meta team and the response they got was, it does not violate the VR policy. Case in point, companies do not take security and safety as a priority yet. So in the context of Metaverse, self-regulation with security first must be the most significant aspect which should be inherent in the DNA of all these big metaverse creating organizations. Or else corporate greed is, as we say in Punjabi, Rabraka. These are organizations whose sole aim and purpose is to spread false information, stoke hate speeches, disperse via conspiracies. In short, all the evil things one can do over social media. When in the age of Web 2.0, owing to the disinformation, Social media literally elevated Trump to president. I don't think we need to revise the whole Cambridge Analytica episode again. In 2001, another great example took shape when Kenya's high court was bashed on Twitter openly with hashtags because the court was reviewing constitutional reforms introduced by the president. In short, the president's political propaganda was being promoted. On investigation, the truth came out that the tweets and the hashtags were being circulated by random people who were being paid $15 per tweet by an anonymous source via wallets just to do so. That's disinformation for hire in its purest form for you. The point being that if Web 2.0, which is said to be social media driven, can bring about such an improbable and unsolicited change to the world, I just start praying thinking about what could be in store for us with Web 3.0 and Metaverse in the coming years. Let's say disinformation for higher concept is going to get a whole lot of upgrade and we should be scared unless the decentralization isn't mixed and implemented with regulation. The silver lining is that even with regulation, we know crisis will keep flowing across. But why not introduce regulators and moderators and a sense of security to mitigate these crises before taking the metaverse forward. How the consumers and the metaverse creators respond collectively to these dark horrors, which might creep up in the future and will ultimately decide whether the metaverse will augment our lives 
or will it lead us to the dungeons and the dragons? If you like the video, make sure you subscribe to the channel and hit that like button for more great content ahead. I'll see you in the next episode. Mindfulness signing off.